Welcome to the Boxing Bookie. It is good to be back. We got a good one for you today. I've been getting a lot of requests for this one. I'm finally going to get into it. Uh, I haven't gotten to it. I've been super busy, but we're going to get into John Ryder and Jaime Munguia. Uh, this is going to be a fun fight. Here's what I promise. This has fight of the year written all over it. Like, this is going to be one heck of a scrap. I've been going back and forth on this, and I still having trouble uh, picking a winner. Uh, but before we get into this, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow uh, 3D Boxing on all forms of social media. The Boxing Bookie comes at you uh, for every major fight, showing you how to bring down the house, how to consistently make money betting on the sport of boxing. We don't gamble here. We use DraftKings. You can't even use DraftKings in Texas. Um, but if you do gamble, I'm going to show you how to bring down the house. I'm going to show you that there's always a bull market somewhere. I want you to show you how to consistently make money. The, the Boxing Bookies, the odds makers. Uh, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to handicap this what I do. And I'm going to show you how to consistently make money. We're off to a tremendous start this year. We're making money every single week, and we're going to continue to do that. Um, also, subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That is Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. All proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. Uh, all proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. Let's get into uh, today's show. Ooh. Okay. Jaime Munguia and John Ryder. Uh, this is a, a, an interesting fight. Uh, like I said, I, I've gone back and forth on this. Munguia has looked better. I was a Munguia hater for a long time. Munguia has gotten better. Perhaps it's had parts to do with Eric Morales. It's been a, a while now with Morales, like four years already, believe it or not. You know, obviously COVID was in the middle of that and stuff, but uh, he started there all the way back in 2020 with Spike O'Sullivan. Then he came back, he fought Toronto Johnson. He fought just once this past year, and it was a heck of a fight with Derevinchenko. He won the fight, took a 12th-round knockout to do so from a body shot. But he has looked lighter on his feet. He's, he's got that strong, solid frame. He's strong as an ox. He sits down on his punches. He throws things hard. His jab is like a shotgun. Now, it's, it's kind of sloppy, and you can counter it, and you can time it, and there's, you know, he's slow. But he's got a, good, he's got a solid punch output. You know, there, there's he's sloppy, and there's things that you can do. He's off balance a lot. His, his footwork is poor. His, it's kind of wide. Like he can't move well. Right, He is getting a little lighter on his feet, and he's getting better, but it's still not good on his feet. Tremendous body puncher. So... This is setting up for a good fight, right? He can hit you, and he's going to hit you hard, but he can also be hit a lot. He throws everything hard. Like I said, everything he throws is hard. His jab is hard. His power shots are hard, which makes him easy to time, right? There's there's no cadence. There, there, there's nothing he's changing up. He just throws hard all the time. If you can get to his body, I think he can be had. Ryder's a pretty good body puncher. He just doesn't commit to it a lot. Like I said, Munguia's got a good jab, but he forgets about it at times, and, and he leaves it in his pocket. And he just wants to kind of walk you down. But he walks you down without a jab. Ryder doesn't throw a ton of shots, but what he throws is really, really accurate. Ryder is really, really accurate. Ryder's also not the quickest guy, but his footwork is really good. He, he, he slides out. He pivots out. He's got slick feet that aren't very quick, if that makes sense. Both guys have an excellent chin. Both guys have a tremendous chin. So this all lines up to be a, a tremendous fight. Magia can be hitting exchanges. Ryder is really good at timing you and punching you in between your punches. He really does that really well. Ryder can fight coming backwards or going forwards, and he's shown that, and he fought well enough. He did some decent work, I should say, in the Canelo fight going backwards. And, you know, he didn't win very many rounds in that fight, but he, he fought, you know, and then in, in the Jacobs fight, he fought most of the fight coming forward, and, and it didn't work for him in the first half of the fight. It worked for him in the second half of the fight, and he was able to eke out a decision. I wish he was a little busier. He does not throw a lot of punches. He, he's not a he's not a volume guy at all. And he's also not a heavy hitter, right? So how's he winning? Well, he's very, very accurate. He's a southpaw. I, I think that can give Munguia 
issues. Mugia is sloppy. Mugia is flawed. I think a lefty who's accurate with the shots, who throws, who selects the shots well, can give him problems. I want Ryder to work that jab and get on the inside. On the inside, Ryder is better, but Mugia is stronger and the bigger hitter. So how does that turn out? Like everything about this fight is good. Everything about this fight is good. You know, I, I feel like there are natural gifts that Mugia has, his strength, his physical strength. He is so strong as a Brahma bull. But Ryder is so much more skilled. Like, Ryder is low-key really a good boxer. Like, he doesn't come off that way. But if you watch his footwork, you watch how he selects his shots, you watch how he sets up his shots, he's good. He can close the distance good. He can box up his back foot. There's a lot more that he can do. But like I said, Mugia is like the Shaq of boxing. He's so strong, and he's got a little bit now. Like Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal had like the little baby hook set. He's just had a little bit of enough skill to dominate, right? mcgee has got a little bit of skill now. It's not just the slow, plodding thing that you can time and beat up. Like there's a little bit of nuance to him now. So that, that's what makes this fight so interesting. I think the fight's going to be on the inside, and I think this is going to be an absolute barn burner. Ryder's going to do what Derevinchenko did. Derevinchenko gave out in the last round. Ryder's got a tremendous gas tank. A, a trem- so, so does Munguia, and that's what makes this fight interesting. But can you chop down Ryder? I don't know that you can. Canelo couldn't. Uh, Cam Smith couldn't. Zach Parker's a totally different fighter, but you know he couldn't, but he broke it. That, that's a different thing entirely. John Ryder doesn't look like much. He, he's short. He's not a big hitter. He's not a, a massive hitter. He doesn't. He's not ultra. He's good. He's a tough guy to beat. He's got to win over my guy. He's got to win. It, <laughs> It's a loss to Rocky feeling in a fight that most thought he won. You know, he's come up short, right? And the other thing I would factor in, he's got the win over Jacobs, which is his, his best win in another close fight. He finally got a decision to go his way. Caleb Smith is a fight I, I thought he won. He didn't get it, right? So I, I guess at the end of the day, you know, he he may have not deserved the win over Ryder, but he definitely deserved it over Caleb Smith. So I guess all things even out, except he didn't get a world title. But Ryder is good. And he's not a guy that you can stop. Like I said, Canelo couldn't stop him. Jacobs couldn't stop him. Caleb Smith couldn't stop him. So I don't think Mungi is going to stop. Let's get into the odds. Let's uh, let's let me show you what I'm looking at here. And I'm going to hedge this a little bit because I really, really don't know. Um. Again, DraftKings, like the way, user-friendly. You can't bet online in Texas at all. So I'm just walking you through this. Jaime Munguia, I'm going to pick him to win. He's going to have, as he always does, the judges on his side. Derek Pinchenko, uh, Inoue, Dennis Hogan. It, it's one after another. The judges like Munguia. I'm not. I'm just gonna leave it at that. So I'm picking him to win. It's minus three hundred. So a hundred dollar bet is gonna pay you thirty three dollars. I'm going over ten and a half because I, I I don't think that he's going to stop Ryder, and Ryder's certainly not going to stop him. So that's minus two twenty five. That pays you forty four forty four. So that makes you seventy seven. 77 if Ryder if Mungia wins. What I'm also gonna do is make a one-third bet to head that Ryder wins by decision. Th- look, there are three outcomes that I think are possible. Mungia by stoppage, I think that's the least likely. Ryder by points, I think that's the middle likely. And Mungia by points, I think, is the most likely. And I'm really torn between Mungia by points and Ryder by points. Really, the difference for me is that Mungia 
seems to always get the decision and Ryder doesn't, right? That's why I'm leaning towards Munguia. That's how close I feel this fight is. So if I'm wrong, a $33 bet, a one a one third bet, so one third of your normal bet makes you all the money back. So what would that do? So on a $233 bet, that would make you that's 165 and 44. It's going to make you $200, $209, 209. But then you have to take so it's going to make you $109. I'm sorry, you got to take the 100 off if, if, from my gear. It's going to make you $109 on a $233 bet if Ryder wins. By technical decision. If Munguia wins, like I'm suggesting he will on points, it's going to make you 77 minus 33. It's going to make you $44. So either way, you're making money on this as long as it goes the distance. As long as it goes the distance, you're making money on this fight. And that's what I'm saying. The, the odds of, of this, I think, not going the distance are, are, are slim because both guys are so have such a tremendous chin. So I, I love it going over 10 and a half. And this is how you make money on it either way. You actually make more money if Ryder wins on a small bet. Because you're taking Ryder by decision. Ryder's not going to win this fight by knockout. If he wins the fight, he's going to win by decision. And it, and it pays plus 500. So you're putting off 233. Winning 98. You know what I'm saying? You're winning a ton of money here. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, follow the Boxing Bookie on all forms of social media. Boxing Bookie comes at you for every major fight. Show you had to bring down the house. There's a bull market. There's always a bull market somewhere. Let's bring down the house together. Subscribe. Uh, also, my Patreon, please. My Patreon gives you all types of awesome perks. Uh, you'll get a free T-shirt. You get your lock of the week. You can ask me to scout a fighter, and I'll do that for you. And I'll also uh, break down a fight and handicap a fight for you that I have. Is there something you want me to handicap that I haven't handicapped? I'll take a look at it, and I will do a video just for you. We got to join the Patreon. That's $5 a month. You get all that and more. Uh, it is January 22nd, 2024, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.